Hello, so I wanted to do just a really quick review today of the Roland TD1 KPX2. That's these drums right here. Basically what I'll be doing is just showing a couple of the built-in sounds and then some of the sounds that you can get uh, running it through a computer. And also just a couple of things that I like and dislike about it. So let's get into it. So first of all, I'm just going to show you what it sounds like unplugged. This is completely without any sounds and just what the pads sound like themselves. Now I'm just going to go through the kits and I'll start off with the first one and I'll just play them really, really quickly. So that's a quick look at all the built-in kits. My favourite is number three, which is... Kind of a dry kit, which I quite like. So one thing I don't particularly like about this kit is that the kick drum pad is just like a rubber pad. It does have enough for two, like a double kick drum pedal, but I just don't like the way that it feels, uh, and I do wish that it had like a mesh head or something like that. And if you notice, if you sometimes when you kick the pad, it can trigger the ride symbol. You can trigger the ride pedal, which is a little bit annoying, but it's easy to edit out if you're going to be recording directly with the MIDI. So another thing I don't particularly like is the hi hat. It's just like this one on its own stand here, and to get like the actual the actual closed hi hat sound, like a tight closed hi hat sound, you have to be like right above the actual hi-hat. If you go to the edge, it gives you more of like a choke sound. And so... So it's quite hard to do the kind of like really, really complicated hi-hat stuff. Maybe that's just me. Maybe it just takes a bit more practice to get used to it, but it is... I've found just a little bit of my... But otherwise it sounds pretty good. So one good thing with this particular kit is that you get this newer hi-hat pedal. And you hear you get quite a lot of expressiveness with it. And you can even splash with it. It actually comes with two springs, one on each side, but I took one off because I found that with both springs it was just a little bit too tight. But otherwise it's pretty good like this with the built-in kits. Something else I noticed while playing this kit is that when I hit the cymbals, they often like kind of lower themselves down. So they kind of get lower as I play them and it's a little bit annoying the adjustment that they have. So the only adjustment the cymbals have on this kit is this kind of latching mechanism. And it's not the most secure and it doesn't hold it in position like that. So when I'm playing it often goes like into that position where I want it to stay like that. A little bit annoying, but definitely something you can get used to. Now, another thing is that the the symbols on the built-in module are chokeable, but I haven't found a way how to choke them whilst it's plugged into my computer through MIDI, but I'm sure there's a way to do it. So that's just a really quick review about some of the good and bad things about this kit. Now, um, I didn't actually cover the folding of it because there's so many clips online of it being folded and unfolded and through the official channels. There's also a lot of clips of people actually playing the kit with all the different built-in sounds. So I thought I'd just show you a couple of the ways that you can actually use this plugged into your computer. 
I did do a separate video if you want to click up on the top right to see that of how to plug it in and set it up. I'm just going to show you a couple of kits from Addictive Drums because in my experience that's been one of the ones that works the best straight out of the box. I'll also throw in a couple of clips of using it with Superior Drummer 3 which is also a really great drum VST if you want to use this as a triggering kit. But overall basically what I would suggest that if you're getting this for a practice kit or because it's compact I think it is a pretty good kit for what it does and while it's easy to fold and unfold you're probably going to spend, it's probably going to spend most of its time unfolded, just set out, ready to play. Because I find that if you fold it up, you probably won't be playing it that much. I got this one because I have a small room that I need to use it in, so space is definitely an issue for me. But if you're going to be getting a kit just for triggering, you might want to look at the Alysis Nitro Mesh, Mesh Nitro, um, because that's a slightly larger kit, but also has all mesh pads and it's a great price. If you're looking at something for rolling that's a little bit just above the beginner level or you just want it for triggering or you want the more realistic triggering sounds and feel, I would actually suggest going up to the, to the TD-17. Um, you can get the base model which has a better module, better snare and a better kick drum stand. It has a better snare pad but the other pads are rubber. But if you go to the TD-17 KVX I believe it is, that has all mesh pads and a better hi-hat and like it's just overall better. So I think for the price, this is a pretty good kit, especially if you're like really looking for the space saving features of it. But if you were going to spend like just a little more, I would personally next time if I was going to buy a kit again and space wasn't quite as much of an issue for me, I'd definitely go with the TD-17. Of course, you can buy the TD-17 module and plug it into this kit, but then you're losing the extra kick drum and the better snare. And then if you're going to upgrade this kit, then it's a bit of a sunk cost because this kit really is mainly for people who want something that's compact and just really a practice kit.
that's it. Thanks very much for watching. Be sure to subscribe if you found it interesting and let me know down in the comments if you want to see other comparisons or different drum VSTs.